episode four of Region Race. We're going to take a look back at a region game with an unbelievable atmosphere. We're going to take a look forward at another region game that is building a similar type of bug. And we'll get up to date with the major moves that have happened in region standings. The Laney Josie game was the craziest atmosphere I've seen in a high school gym. But the, maybe the more impressive feat from Laney last weekend was when they went to Sandersville, beat Washington County. Uh, Zepp Jasper, Jay Sean Brooks played zero minutes and very few minutes respectively in that game in the first half. So two of your key players are out. The Wildcats get down by 11 points, but find a way to come all the way back and win. It was a packed crowd. Um, both teams played well. Washington County continues to impress two fellas named Taekwon. Taekwon Lewis, we already knew, he was dynamite. And then um, a guard off the bench named Taekwon Christian was very good. So, um, but I talked to, uh, I've talked a lot about Mr. January, Christian Keeling, and I've talked a lot about Jay Sean Brooks and, and Zepp Jasper over the season. And one guy um, who I talked to Coach Buck Harris about after the Washington County game was Colin Young. Buck with uh, a couple of your key players out most of the first half um, and Waco sitting back in that zone. How big was it for guys like Colin Young to come in and make some big shots there in the second half? You know, the thing with Colin, he has to see that ball going in the hoop. And once that happens, he's going to run off three or four baskets in a row. So I stayed with him instead of pulling him after he missed his first three shots because he struggled and he struggles with his confidence. But I wanted Colin to know that I'm with you. Yeah. You know, all I know you got to do is make that first one. And when he made that first one, I knew we were going to be good. So I mentioned an upcoming game that had that was building a real buzz, and that is Friday night's region matchup between Augusta Christian and Hammond. And, and Hammond out of Columbia includes Seventh Woods, which is a player who is like, I guess I would say internet famous. Um, you, you know, I have 12,000, believe it or not, I have 12,000 videos on my YouTube channel. And I think the second most watched video is some random Seventh Woods dunk that I still haven't seen to this day. Somebody recorded it at, uh, I, think a, I think, one of Damian Key's AAU tournaments, uh, maybe the Icebreaker a couple years ago. And that thing is the second, out of 12,000 videos, the second most uh, popular video. Anyway, um, in addition to Seventh Woods, uh, Hammond has a guy named uh, uh, Xavier McDaniel Jr., X-Man for the Seattle Superhonic, Supersonics was famous as, when I was a kid. And, um, and so anyway, you know, a lot of star power coming to Augusta Christian. But Augusta Christian beat Hammond, I think, two out of three times last year. More importantly, Augusta Christian is the defending state champs. Big time region matchup. Augusta Christian probably, definitely has the biggest team with the best inside play in our area with Isaiah Kelly and Calvin. But but Augusta Christian also has Madison Williams, a very good guard. So they're the biggest, maybe one of the most, if not the most talented team in our area. So that's going to be a great atmosphere. I have not been to an Augusta Christian game except for just a brief moment earlier this year. Can't wait to see that. Okay, let's go through, okay, let's go through the region stuff. Um, single A. Aquinas. Aquinas continues to be second in their region. They had a return matchup with region leader Hancock Tuesday after getting beat by Hancock by 30 at Aquinas um, earlier in the month. Aquinas went to Hancock, lost by 10. So you could say that's an improvement and, and that would be true. But um, so Aquinas, that's where they stand, second in the region. Um, hopefully they'll get another chance at those, those guys um, in region tournament play. Um, Double A, you've got Harlem playing Swainsboro Saturday, Dublin Tuesday. Dublin has two losses in the region. 
Harlem has two losses in the region. Swainsboro has zero. If, if Harlem could pull off a sweep here, they may go into region tournament play with a one seed and a bye. Most importantly, um, what's really important is, is that Harlem get a good enough seed for region tournament play where they can either win the region tournament or get second because the prize there is, are, is are at least one home game, is at least one home game or could be more in the state tournament. So uh, region three, the most competitive region we know, big changes here, big changes. I wrote on the blog a couple nights ago that I felt like the GHSA really bumbled this thing with uh, with Butler, where they go from uh, they would be six and one now, and all of a sudden they're four and three because somebody or Don Coleman had a flagrant foul in a game, and it's all at the blog. I'm not going to waste any more time on that. I think it's ridiculous, but so be it. We, we, we have big changes in the region alignments or the region standings. Now here's the key: Butler beat Josie. They came from behind from 17 points. They beat Josie Tuesday, and they play Washington County at home Friday. What a matchup. If, if Butler's able to win Friday, by my math, they get right back in second place. Maybe a tie. I've got I've to sort that out and how tiebreakers work and all that. But the two losses that were stripped from, from Butler were Josie and Washington County, and in one week's time, they can, I'm not saying they will, but they can earn those wins back and, and, and get back to what I believe, I'm sorry to say it, but what I believe is their rightful place as the number two team in that region. But no matter what, great action in that region. We, we, we've covered Laney and Washington County last weekend, Laney and Josie last weekend, Butler and, and Josie Tuesday, um, Washington County, Butler fr Friday. I mean, this, this region is just off the charts off the charts good can't wait to see that action this weekend um region five the big story there is grovetown they continue to roll five straight victories they host greenbrier friday night that will be a, a, a key moment for for uh grovetown but it'll also be a great girls game uh grovetown's girls just beat cross creek um very good girls action in that game so so that would be a good gym to be in friday night as well um let me see if i have anything else here richmond academy beat evans in double overtime tuesday with playing as far as i can tell none of their starters and maybe none of their top five six seven guys um so i'm told the jv um players stepped into um stepped up and the varsity players evidently made an incredible mistake in judgment. And, um, and, and, and so they didn't play that game. And so kudos to those young guys at Richmond for stepping in. I'm sure they played their hearts out. And I, for one, would support them getting more chances to do that. But that's probably overstepping my bounds. Apologies if anybody doesn't like that. I will see you in the gym soon.